Shalom, Israel, Most High Christ, bless. Hey, I'm Officer Baruch, and I got with me. Officer Abishai. Officer Abishai, the mighty, mighty warrior. So all praise today, man. Look, today, the name of this class is Today is the Best Day. Today is the best day. You might ask, to do what? To do whatever it is that you need to do. Because yesterday can't get that back. That's the past. Tomorrow, you don't know what the most I got in store for you. So guess what? Whatever it is that you need to get done or you should be doing, today is the best day to do it. Now watch this. Let me get James 4 and 14. Yes, sir. The book of James, the 4 verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is a vapor that has appeared for a little time and then vanish away. So your life, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what the Most High God said for your life tomorrow. And your life is like a fart in the wind. One minute is here, the next minute is gone. So, hey, today is the best day to get started on whatever it is you feel like you need to be doing. And now, mind you, if you feel like you need to be doing some wickedness, then this ain't, this ain't for you because you're on your way to eternal damnation if you feel like you need to do some wickedness. This, for those who want to keep the commandments, who want to get it right with the Most High God and want to push their people to bigger and better things. Today is the best day for you. For you evil doers and wicked folks, get the hell on. All right. So now, uh, one, let me give you another one. Let's go to Matthew 6 and 34. Read off. Yeah, go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 34. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take, take the thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto the day. It is evil thereof. So see, this is the thing. It say, take no therefore no thought for tomorrow. You can't be stressing about tomorrow. I myself have been guilty of that. Worried about tomorrow. Now, should you be concerned about things? You know, if the most high bless you with, with life tomorrow, yes. Make you a plan to do what it is you need to be doing. But don't stress over it. Don't stress over what got to be done tomorrow. Deal with it when tomorrow comes. And then it says, take thought, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Tomorrow coming. Tomorrow is coming regardless of what you do. Tomorrow is coming. So don't worry about that. You need to be focused on today. Say sufficient unto the day there is, is trouble coming. So guess what? Be ready to deal with it. But today is the best day to put your plan together, to get your counsel, and do all that type of stuff. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. All right. Let's, let's go to Hebrews 10 and 24. Because today is what they call the present. Today is a gift from God in order to get everything right. Read. The book of Hebrews to the 10 verse 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So, right there, let's consider one another. The best time I can provoke you unto good works is when I'm in your presence. In the present time. I can't be talking about, hey, Abishai, you know what? Tomorrow, bro, I'm going to push you to good works tomorrow. Because I'm supposed to leave out here, car crash. Straight bullet, hell, a heart attack, anything. And I may not see you tomorrow. So guess what? Hey, I'll have a shot. Hey, bro, keep pushing. Keep doing the work. Keep keep being a good father, good husband. Is that for the men? Bro, make sure you get to the next new moon. Make sure I gotta I gotta provoke you to good works today. Cause today and now in the present is the best time to do it. And everybody, all y'all should be doing that. That should not go, a, a day shouldn't go by where you provoke your family, your righteous family, and even the wicked ones. Provoke them to good works, according to these scriptures. That's why today is the best damn day. 
Every day you should be doing that. And go to Hebrews 13, 16. Because today is the best day to talk to each other, to communicate to each other. Watch this. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. To, to do good and to for communicate, forget not. So guess what? Because now, most of the time, when you forget something, it's because what? You didn't do it when you should have done it. You come back and you be like, you know what? I'm going to do that later. And then next thing you know, damn it, I forgot. I forgot to do that. You should have done it in the present time on that day when you thought about it. Because, see, now, a lot of us, we strong starters. We be on our sponge bar. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. And then a few minutes later, I forgot what I'm supposed to be doing. That's how you mess up. When it pops into your mind, now, if you're driving down the road and you want to do something like, you know, I got to pay my own, well, of course, you can't do it right then. But make a mental note. And get, when you get to where you're going, go and do that PayPal, cash app, put an envelope, whatever. But if you are a strong starter, you got to be a strong finisher. Because... uh. The bishop, all it's the thing the bishop be saying. He said, I might, I might not always be something, but I'm always disciplined. Motivated. I might not be always motivated. Thank you, officer. He said, I might not always be motivated, but I'm always disciplined. And that's what's going to get you to the end goal, being disciplined. Being disciplined is going to get you to the end goal. And the best time to be disciplined is right in the moment. Is right in the moment when you're facing those issues that you got to deal with. All right. Let's go to Job 1 and 1. I want to I'm, I'm I'm, I'm read something right quick. We're going to read Job 1 and 1. Because you hear, you hear, oh, ain't, ain't nobody be perfect. Ain't nobody be perfect. Read that. The book of Job to the 1 verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and ensured evil. So now, okay, it says that Job was perfect. It was Job was perfect. And now, in, in my Bible, you know how they put the little T next to it, like I guess it means translation or something. It says blameless. Blameless. And you know why Job was perfect? Because he was blameless. Because they could not say that Job sinned. And then what made Job perfect was that when the sin and the temptation came up on him, in that moment, in that present time, Job made the right choice. So today is the best day for you to make the right choice according to these scriptures. Today the now and the here is the best damn time for you to eschew evil. Ain't no, you know what, man? I, I I get on the call next. I get on the call next Tuesday. Oh man, no, no. I, I talk to them brothers. I call them brothers that gave me that flyer. I call them next week. You ain't promised tomorrow. So today is the best day to communicate. Today is the best day to push and provoke your righteous family. To pro, I would say people. To good works, a.k.a. keeping these commandments. Because that's the bottom line of it all, is to keep the commandments. and Do the will of the Most High God. That's what you got to do every day. That's why Noah was perfect. That's why Job was perfect. Because they took the opportunities to be perfect and choose the commandments of the Most High God. It's just that simple. So, with that being said, okay, we gonna um, uh, let's go to Luke eighteen and one. Cause you, you know, oh man, you know what? I'm gonna pray later on. I'm gonna I'm gonna pray when 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 I get to the house. And I now mind you, yes, you that's when you're supposed to pray. But how often do you pray? Cause Scripture tells us what we pray three times a day. 
Uh, we're going to get there in a minute. Let's read that Job, uh, that, I'm sorry, Luke 18 and 1. The book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and Luke, not to faint. They, they what? They should what? Always pray and not to faint. Always pray. Should always pray. So guess what? Today is the best day, if you don't pray that often, to always pray. Now, what's that scripture, the scripture where it showed that King David, uh, Psalm 55. Yeah, get that way. So he prayed three times a day. You should always pray. And today is the best day to start that. You got to start somewhere. And today is the best day to start it. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. Even in morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Man, look at that. Read that again. Verse, the book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 17. Even in morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So right there, man, you got to understand. Everything that is done and how we move in IUIC comes from these scriptures. When the bishop them say, pray three times a day. Why? This is what our forefathers did. Why? This is what Christ tells us to do. And Paul said what? Be ye follow me as I follow Christ. So guess what? These prophets and the mighty men of our forefathers when they did things according to the uh, the will of the Most High God, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. And today is the best day to start. Today is the best day to start. Quit waiting. Quit procrastinating. Hey, let's get Psalms 119, 59, and 60. That procrastination, man, that procrastination is a... Is, is is the vain of our existence when it comes to Israel. It's a vain to us, man. We are some of the most procrastinating folks when it comes to doing the will of the Most High God. Oh, you know what? I, I do it later. We hear the camp all the time. You know what? I, I'm working on me. Well, the, the, the scriptures is going to fix you. Yes, sir. So what the hell are you talking about? I'm working on me. Come on. Watch that. Read it. Hey, hey, look at that. Read, read, read that. Procrastinate. Delay or postpone action. Put off doing something. So what? Man, right there, it tells you that that's what, you, when you procrastinate, you delaying and putting, postponing action, which means what? I'm not going to do it today. I'm not going to do it right now when I probably should. I'm a fart around and around until I done missed the opportunity. And let's get some of the uh, uh, synonyms. Delay, putting put off something, postpone action, defer action, stall, temporize, play for time, play a waiting game, dally. hesitate. Say dally. What's that? Like, look at that dilly dally. That's a. I, don't, I ain't never heard nobody say hum haw. But the one I really wanted to hear, drag one's feet. Now, heels. guess what? If you get to dragging your feet and heels, like say, man, come on, man. You headed for trouble. If you wavering, you headed for trouble. If you are undecided, say be undecided, you headed for trouble, man. So look, and for you sisters, that's looking for a Lord, one of the things you need to look to make sure that he's a good decision maker, that he doesn't procrastinate, that he get counsel. So, all praise to the Most High. So now, we got to be ready to move forward and by getting started today, which is the best day to get started, you're going to be all right. You're going to fall and bump your butt, but, hey, that happens. Righteous man falls seven times, but he get back up. So, now, watch this. And the reason I say 
today is a good day because the Most High is dealing with us on a daily basis. Watch this. Let's get Psalm 68 and 19. Did you want Psalm 119? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll pray. Thank you. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto the testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. So he said, I made haste. That means what? He got right to it. Let's get the definition of the word haste. Because that's not the, the average Negro term. You might not hear that, but you hear, man, I, I, I hurry up. Definition of haste. Excess of speed or urgency of movement or action. Hurry. So right there, it's a excessive speed. That brother used some excessive speed. He didn't just speed on up. Excessive speed or urgency of movement or action. That brother hurried the hell up and got back to these commandments. That's what y'all got to do. That's what we got to do. As a people, as a nation, we got to hurry up and get back to these commandments. And guess what? Today is the best damn day to start. If you ain't been doing it, you better start doing it. And if you doing it, today is the best damn day to push 10 times harder. If you call it one, guess what? Today is the best day to call three or four. Today is the best day to start doing everything better. It's just that simple. We make it difficult because what? We want to procrastinate. We want to dilly-dally. We want to hum and haul. No, we got time for that. Hey, let's look at some of the uh, synonyms for, for haste. Speed, hastiness, hurry, hurriness, swiftness, rapidly, rapidness, quickness, pumpsomeness, brickness, rush, rushing, rapidly, quickly, fast, in a rush, in a hurry, expedious. So that... Look, that is, that's how we got to move sometimes, man. When it comes to, to keeping these commandments, you got to move with the, now mind you, when leadership give us orders, you know, once they give us orders, man, we got to get to it. But sometimes now you got to you gotta have a little patience. You got to have patience and you have to wait for the orders to come down. But when it's time to get to keeping these commandments, and you already know that. that That's not nothing that you got to wait up on because the Christian will tell you, keep the command. Hey man, look, bro, it's a dude on uh on TikTok. I ain't going to even say his name to give him no follows or nothing like that. But this dude actually sit there and try to talk down on IUIC and said, Christ never said you got to keep the commandments. Ain't that crazy? This dude, and he he be shooting at Cap. He be shooting at Cap and get a liar a lot. And Cap be smashing this stuff. But this dude actually said, it's a TikTok video. Hey, I, if I say his name, y'all can bleed it out or whatever if y'all need to, right? The dude is, is, is called Rated, Rated by Dre. Rated by Dre. Anyway, I can't remember the one, but I see, yeah, that dude... He be uh, cloud chasing, talking about uh, uh, Christ and we don't do this and we don't do that. But he said, Christ never yelled at people. Then he said, Christ never told people to keep the commandments. I'm like, bro, what the hell is you talking about? It's crazy. But anyway, y'all know Cap smashed all that nonsense anyway. But back to the back to the task at hand. We ain't going to get sideways with that dude there. But. Today is the best day to cast down imaginations because you got people out there like that, man, that, that, that'll that throw you off. So now, all right, so now let's get Psalms uh, 68 and 19. You read off? Yes, sir. The book of Psalms, the 68 verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded, loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. So... Daily, he loaded others with benefits. But guess what? If you ain't keeping the commandments, if you ain't doing his will and his way, no benefits coming to you. But daily, that's why today is the best day. 
I'll give you an example. The scriptures tell us what? To, to uh, congregate, to be around each other. The unity of brethren is something that God loves. He loves to see us when we come together. He loves it. Well, guess what? He may have a situation where your car might be down, you might need some help, but you are you you playing individual like today and you don't want to be around nobody. Well, guess what? You might miss the opportunity because we got mechanics above, around uh, um, in the midst of us. We have brothers who who financially able to help you in the midst of us. But if you're not around, huh? How can you? How can you? You you won't get that help. You ain't communicating. You often you man, damn, I just saw him pull me, pull me. No, today is the best day. For you to come around so you might be able to partake some of those daily blessings that the Most High loads us with every day. In what form is he going to bless you? Only he knows. But if you ain't keeping his commandments, if you ain't being diligent to his word, he not, I'm, it ain't going to happen for you. You might think it's some kind of blessing and he might provide for you, but the blessings, the blessing, blessing, blessings, you might miss it in whatever form they come in because you ain't keeping the commandments. So today is the best day to get back to keeping these commandments. And I'm, I'm going to say that about a million times. Today is the best day. So if you get tired of hearing it, well, hell, <laughs> too bad for you. All right. So now we go, you know, we got family members out there in that world that we we have to be around sometimes, but then what you're supposed to do? Today is the best day to let your light shine. Let's get Matthew 5 and 16. And you should always let your light shine. But in those moments when you're around the world, when you're out in the world around wicked family members, wicked co-workers, and anybody that ain't calling themselves a commandment keeper and keeping these commandments, that's the best time to let your light shine. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So that's why that's the best time. That's the best time. Because it ain't giving you the glory, it's giving our most high the glory. But guess what? If you let your light shine, it's going to shine through that darkness. It, that, I ain't never seen the darkness stand up to the light except for the one time in the scriptures when the Most High put that darkness up on Egypt and even the light couldn't get through it. That was the one time I've ever heard about it or read about it, the light not being able to push the darkness back. And that, like I say, and that was of the Most High. So if, his, if he put the darkness on you, he don't want no light, guess what? It ain't going to be no light. And in the beginning, he said what? Let there be light. And then when he said let there be light, boom. But hey, read that again. Watch, read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So now. If you letting your light shine and you taking that opportunity to let your light shine, your father going to be glorified. You're going to kill a little bit of that wickedness that's in him because the darkness cannot stand up to the light. Watch this. Let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 5. The book of John chapter 1 verse 5. And the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended not. So see that right there. The light shined in the darkness, and the dark comprehended not. And when mo most time, when you can't comprehend something, that means what? You can't stand up against it. You can't stand up against it. And what? The darkness got to get gone. The darkness got to get gone. You ever heard the term, kill them with kindness? Every time somebody be being a butthole to you, or, or, or like, yeah, I'm going to use the word butthole, or be hating on you or whatever, but you keep that, that that charitable spirit. You keep that loving spirit, and you deal with them. Shalom, yeah, yeah, ha, ha, kiki. You know, even though they're cracking on you, you let you kill them with kindness because why? 
the darkness can't stand up to the light and they always tend to fade away. They always tend to change when they be around you because you let your light shine and they darkness cannot stand up to it. So that is why today is the best day. When you go to work, when you got to go pick your baby up from your wicked mama or heart, wherever you around them wicked family members, that's why you got to let your light shine. You know, and today is the best day, man. Today is the best day to come together, to unify, and come together in unity. Watch this. Let's get Sirach 25 and 1. Read off. Yes, sir. The book of Sirach, 25, verse 1. And three things I was brutified and stood up brutal both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So, right, the first thing they say is that is the unity of brethren. And guess what? The Most High finds that beautiful. And that's why today is the best day. Because you can't go back and unify and, and come together with nobody yesterday. You can't do that. Ain't no going back. Unless they got a time machine or something like that, there ain't no going back and, and, and unifying to yesterday. Today is the best day. To you. That's why I wanted to chance you here. Unity, unity, unity. And today is the best day to come together in unity. The most high love that thing. He finds that beautiful to come together in unity. You know? And so that's why if the school is open, if there's an event going on, a gathering of the prophets in any area, you need to be there. You need to be there. You need to make haste and get there. What's stopping you? What's stopping you? You know, that's the thing. Most of the time, it be us stopping us. It don't be no roadblocks. It don't be nobody got you in handcuffs. You know, it ain't nobody got you in the hospital or nothing like that there. You just like, oh, man, I ain't feeling it today. Uh, you know, but you got to get there, man. You got to get there, and you can't wait because you ain't promised tomorrow. You ain't promised tomorrow. What that ring? That's that ring that, that Rick James punched Charlie Murphy in the head with. Unity! Wagged his hand out. <laughs> Too crazy. And the reason that the best day, hey. The reason that the best day uh, to come together is, the, I'm sorry, the reason why today is the best day to come together is because you don't know when the sky going to crack open. You don't know when it's coming. When, when, when uh, let's get First Thessalonians 5 and 2. And why you shouldn't wait, this is why you shouldn't wait. This is why you should get your sugar honey iced tea together. Get your sugar, honey, iced tea together and car start congregating, start keeping these commandments because of this. Read the that. book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 2. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so coming as a thief in the night. So he coming like a thief in the night. Don't nobody know when a thief coming. Don't nobody know when a thief coming. You don't know. So guess what? Stop procrastinating. Start making haste and get it together today, right now. Because you don't know when that's you don't know when he's coming back. You don't know. And and that's gonna be a terrible, a terrible day. Like they tell you, oh, oh, it's gonna be so nice when he come back. It's gonna be, oh no, man, it's he gonna come back with screaming. And it's going to be a terrible day. Hey, what's that, Isaiah 66? When he say he coming back like that? Yes, sir. What's that? Uh, yeah, 15. it's 15. There you go. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger 
with fury, and he was rebuked with the flames of fire. So look, right there, right there, it's not going to be a nice day. It's not going to be a nice day. It ain't going to be no angels, them little white fat babies with the wings, none of that. Read on. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So right there, man, that's not going to be a beautiful day. That's why you better get it together now. You better start that process of repentance and redemption. You better start it now. Today is the best day to get started because you ain't promised tomorrow. You don't know when he's coming back. And if you keep farting around, you're going to get blasted with these flames. Right. And that sword. And your soul is going to be damned. You're going to get that second debt. And you don't want that. So today is the best day for you to get your sugar, honey, iced tea together. Right. Keep playing if you want to. Keep playing if you want to. You want to hey. Five huh? Five yeah, get it, get it, get it, get it. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 7. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly the wrath of the Lord coming forth and in thy security Thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. <laughs> Man, wait a minute. Look what he say. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord. Then put not off from day to day. Quit procrastinating. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth. So suddenly means you ain't got no chance. You ain't got no chance. You ever see, you ever see when them when the seals be swimming and all of a sudden out of nowhere this great white come up out of the bottom of the water and bite them? It's a wrap. It's a wrap. All you see is a pool of blood and 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 the seal might be moving a little bit, but guess what? That shark is on his way to get done done. Ain't no way you're going to make it because it's coming suddenly. And then it's say, not the cuddles and kisses of the Lord, but the wrath of the Lord going to come forth. And in thy security shalt thou be destroyed. So you, go, you, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I got it all together. I got it all right. I'm good. No, in your security, I went. I, I've been going to church every day on the Sunday for all my life. I've been singing praise. I've been praise dancing. No, 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 no. Like the time boy, you say no, 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 no. You are gonna perish in that day because you ain't been keeping the commandments. You ain't got a bundle of prophets. You've been listening to these pork chop pastors who've been lying to you, teaching you what your slave masters want you to know, and you think you got it. No, today is the best day for you to understand and learn that you got to keep these commandments the way they say in the Bible. You got to learn and understand that even though you have mercy, you and we have grace. Even though we have that from the Most High, you still got to do what he tell you to do. You still got to do what he tell you to do. So, hey, look at that. Yeah, put that up there. Look at that. Now, mind you, he ain't bit him yet, but you, I, I promise you that that seal was not expecting that. That suddenly, that suddenly, when he say suddenly, that's how it's going to be. I wish you had one where he was actually biting him and where he was in his mouth. That's an even better one. Try to find one where he, the seal is in the shark's mouth. 
man, look, whoo, just imagine you a surfer. You know, you a surfer out there. And uh, look at that go right there. Look at that, 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 look at that. That one. No, the other one, that one right there, look at that. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Ain't that, ain't this, it's over. That's, it's done. He got, suddenly, read, hey, watch this. Read, read verse 7 again. The book of Sirach, chapter 5, verse 12. Make no tarry to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. Hey, man, put that, put that picture back up there. I'm going to put that picture back up there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, now look. You know, seals, they, they swim in groups. They swim together. So he's swimming alone. He, they chilling. They playing their little swimming games and all that. Then suddenly, suddenly out of nowhere, his, his sense of security has been destroyed. This, this, that shark's teeth, that's the wrath of the Lord. The shark's teeth is the wrath of the Lord. And guess what? Guess who that, that seal pup is? That seal is. <laughs> hmm. That's them heathens. That's you uh, wicked Israelites. That's you Israelites who procrastinate in keeping these commandments. You is that doggone seal. Destroyed. That's all I got on that, man. But I'll pray that. That was a good one now, man. That was a good one. That's why today is the best day. Let me say this. Hey, let's get uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13 and 5. We always read this. We always read this. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves. How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So see now, that's the thing. You have to do this on a daily. Every day we gotta examine ourselves. Cause guess what? You don't always wake up in the spirit. You don't always wake up feeling all gung ho to go and be around uh the, the body. So you gotta examine yourself. Bro, what what's going on with you? This is me talking to my old self. Bro, what's going on with you? Why you don't want to do this? Why you don't want to go do that? And that's examining yourself. Examining yourself is having a conversation with yourself. And you got to do this every day. You got to do this every day. Because if not, that old man, that old woman, they ain't dead. They ain't put to rest. They just in that sunken place. And they looking for a way out. And the minute you let you crack that dough, boom, they, they, gonna, they gonna kick it off the hinges. So that's why you gotta examine yourself every day. Uh, let's go to Sirach 18 and 20. The book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 20. Before judgment, examine thyself. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. So it says, before you judgment come down upon you, man, you better, you better examine yourself. You better examine yourself. Because if you don't, you, you can never know what you need to correct. And today is the best day to start correcting your, your faults, your shortcomings, the areas in which you lack. Today is the best day to start correcting them, man. You can't wait. Or you'll be, you'll, you'll be like that seal, that seal. You will be up in, in the shark's mouth, jacked up, on your done, really, done. And so you got to start doing these things daily. There ain't no, 
I'm going to do it tomorrow. Or I'll get it next week. You ain't promised that. How you know that you're going to even be here next week? There's people in the grade right now that had plans for tomorrow, for next week. But you don't know. That's why you got to do your best to do everything to please the most high today. And wait, wait. The scripture says, God, the things that are pleasing to him are made known to us. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 4. O Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to God are made known to us. So, so with that being said, he lets us know the things that are pleasing to him. He tell us. So what you waiting for? Today is the best day to start doing those things. Because now in that world, when that man and that woman told you what you what the things that they liked, when you was trying to get to them, <laughs> I had to kid myself. When you were trying to get them to do them things, you didn't take no time. You didn't waste no time getting to that. So get to keeping these commandments. Get to doing the things that are pleasing to him. Now let's go read that first John 3 and 22. Because if you if you ain't if you ain't taking making your steps and doing what's pleasing to him after he done told you, there ain't nothing for you. There ain't nothing for you. It's just that simple. There ain't nobody who constantly poops on their parents or poops on their loved ones and then in the end get everything they want. Y'all know what I really wanted to say, but I'm going to use the word poop. And then get what they want. So why you think it's going to work like that with the most high? You've been lied to. You've been told. You've been told, yeah, we're under mercy. We're under grace. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. But now I'm going to continue to spit and poop on God's laws, statutes, and commandments. I'm going to spit in the face of the Most High and not keep his commandments and not do what he want me to do. And then I'm going to argue and belittle his prophets. But yet, oh, I'm going to go to heaven because I believe. Right. What? You out your damn mind. You out your damn mind. That's like, man, they, I'm telling you, boy, they, they beat it into us something serious, man. Oh, no, we ain't got to keep we ain't got to keep the commandments. No, the law's done away with. Nigga, the law's the only thing going to get you into the kingdom. So how, how you going to get there? If, 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 if the key is done away with, explain that to me. That's why today is the best day. You better get to watching some classes and, and, and paying attention to what the prophets is saying so you can understand and realize what the key to the kingdom really is. The scriptures tell us faith without works is dead. The scriptures tell us be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Yeah, read that, read that right quick. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, what we just talked about, the keys to the kingdom. <laughs> now, what in there do it say mercy? We get mercy. He's been merciful to us. Grace, yeah. We got grace. That's part of his mercy. But right now is the best time for you to start doing the things that are pleasing in the sight of him. And we're going to get the kingdom because we are keeping his commandments. Hey, read that again. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 22. Because y'all ain't getting it. Y'all ain't understanding it. Read it. Watch. And whatsoever we ask. Now, what we asking for, we ask to get the kingdom. We want to go to heaven, as y'all call it. We want to get the kingdom. We want the redemption and of our people. Read. We receive of him because we keep 
his commandments. So the one that, that's going to let us in, that's going to stamp the approval on us, tells us what? To keep his commandments. But yeah, y'all sitting there talking about, oh, can't nobody do all the commandments. Oh, can't nobody keep the laws. The laws done away with. Get the hell out of here, man. That... Wusa. You got to keep the commandments. And today is the best day to start keeping the freaking commandments, y'all. It's just that simple. But the slave masters, they beat it. it man, y'all ain't been watching the bishop's class. Y'all better watch, pay attention to what the bishop is telling y'all. The most high is using this man and the prophets and, 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 and the gods walking this earth to show you people, get it together today and keep these commandments. Right. You've been lied to. He take, man, the most high used the bishop to take y'all books the child right and put your tongue back up on you to show where you done, where you done bamboozled, horn swoggled, and lied to his people. Hey, I see you watching the video. Let's go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Matter of fact, won't you like, subscribe, and share? IUIC Mississippi burning. Like, subscribe, and share. Even comment. And today is the best damn day to start doing it, to start keeping these commandments, to understand that you got to get back to it. That's the key. Yeah. All praise to the Most High. He, he sent Christ as the ultimate sacrifice. He did that. That happened. But you got to do your part. You got to do your part. See, that's what's wrong with us. We lazy as hell. Oh, Jesus died for me, man. I'm good. I'm in there. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. No, it don't work like that. What you going to do? What you going to do? He, he give you the keys. The keys is to keep it under commandments. Why? You know what? Let's get Romans 2 and 13. Oh, read that. Lazy, the definition of lazy, unwilling to work or use energy. See, that's it. Israel, y'all lazy. You're lazy. You're unwilling to work. You don't want to do the work. I want to, we're going to go to church on Sunday. We're going to sit there. We're going to watch all the sisters come in with their tight skirts on. And then we're going to throw a couple of dollars in the, in the, in the, in the box. And then that's it. We in there. We ain't got to do shit else. We in there. Don't work like that. It don't work like that. Message. Read that. The book of Romans chapter 2 verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. What you ain't understanding about that? Look, man. Today is the best day. Because cause let me tell you something. Grandma this and grandpa that went to church 30, 40 years, all their lives. They never missed a Sunday. They never missed a Sunday. Gave plenty of money. Was on the deacon board, the usher board, the mother of the church board, every other board. Some of our peoples was pastors and ministers and deacons, but then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and Saturday was the biggest whoremongers in the town. Right. Pastor Pope Chop got six babies by seven women. Right. Mother so and so, grandma so and so, yeah, had the biggest, baddest house and never worked a day in that job. Why? Because Mr. So and so, Mr. So and so, Mr. So and so, and Mr. So and so was kicking out that bread. Through the week. They was leaving their families for a little while to come over there and lay with grandma so and so and auntie so and so. So when you wonder why she ain't never had no job and wasn't married, but it was always fly. Cause why? Them six days, 
Monday through Saturday, yeah, she was getting it in. But every Sunday, every Sunday she was at church. Every Sunday she was on the front row. Read it again. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Who going to be justified? The doers of the law shall be justified. The doers. That's an action word. They going to be justified. Now, we don't necessarily use justified all the time. So let's read the definition of justified. We're going to verse one, two and one. one two. We're going to read both of them. Definition of justified. One, having done for or marked, or marked by a good legitimate reason. Verse 2, declare or made righteousness in the sight of God. So, oh, so now verse 1, having done for or marked by a good le or legitimate reason. So, what's that legitimate reason? What's that good reason that you're going to be justified? Because you've been keeping the commandments. You looked, you woke up and said, today is the best day for me to keep these doggone commandments. And then... You followed, you did like Job and Noah them, and every time some sin or a temptation was placed in your face, you did what? You chose to go the route that God told you to go. You chose to keep the commandments, and you was made perfect, and that's why you got justified. Number two, declare or made righteous in the sight of God, not in the sight of bishop. Not in the sight of Captain Galilee, not in the sight of Officer Baruch, not in the sight of Officer Abishai, not in the sight of Captain Shemaya or Captain Barnabas or Deacon, none of them. The sight of God. The sight of God. And you got to do this stuff. You got to do these commandments. Ain't no just sitting around listening. People be saying, oh, yeah, I've been watching online for, for four years, five years. All oh, praise to the most high God. You, you, you got the fear of God in you. But you got to start keeping these commandments. And today is the best day to get started. Today is the day. Because you're going to be like that seal. I'm sorry, what? You got something? Yes, sir. Read. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we established the law. So right there, man, look. We established the law by doing the law every day. And it ain't made void. Say, God forbid. So today is the best day to start keeping these commandments to get it right, to come together, to pray, to let your light shine, to examine yourself. Today is the best day. Today is the best day. Ain't no, no. Let's get Zephaniah 1 and 8. I'm going to show you something. We, we use this all the time. So you say, you know what, man, I'm going I'm to I'm get them done. I'm going to get my friends on me. I'm going to get my friend just done. You know, but watch this, man. Zephaniah 1 and 8. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. If you ain't got your friend just on, that's strange to the most high. That's out of order with the most high because he tell us to wear your fringe. Number 1538. He says, wear your fringes and your ribbon of blue to remind you to keep the commandments. And when that day, when, when he come back like a thief in the night, when that sky crack open, as we say, and he come back as a thief in the night, and you ain't got them fringes on, a dress like you should be dressed, you're going to get punished. And these ain't my words, bro. If you ever notice, if you pay attention, everything is backed up with the scriptures. 
with the word of God. And all that fringes on my heart. Where the hell they say that at in the Bible? You better go learn how to sew or you better go to the dry cleaners and see if they got a seamstress in there. You better get to it. And today is the best day to start. Because the most high, ain't man, he ain't playing with us. He is not playing with us. Y'all, man, look, today is the best day to get your sugar honey iced tea together. Make a decision. Choose life. Well, okay, scripture, well, Moses say, I pray, put before you uh, life or death, choose life. You got it? Yes, sir. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thy, that both thy seed may live. So both thou and thy seed may live. So now look, we're gonna let, let, let's slow this down. Let's let's we're gonna slow it down. It said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. So guess what? In that book of life, them angels is writing, they they taking a record. They taking a record. What you gonna choose? I done said it before you. Just like Neo. When Morpheus put the red pill and the blue pill in front of him, which one you going to choose? Message. Because whichever one you choose, they about to put that mark. They about to put that mark in there. So now, it says life or death. Life, you're going to keep these commandments. Death, you're going to follow the world. Blessings and curses. He give you the example that in Deuteronomy 28. He give you, uh, he, he tell you what the blessing is going to be. And he tell you what the curse is going to be. And then he say, choose life. He, tell, he make it easy for you. Choose life, man. Take this right here. That you and your babies may live. Choose this over here and all you niggas going to die. That's right. He make it easy for you. He make it easy for you. And today is the best day for myself and all the Abishai to tell y'all, don't walk off the cliff. Stop. You about to walk off the cliff. So you're going to, get off me, man. Get off me. I'm going to keep walking. You going to walk off the cliff? What's wrong with you? Now, this is a sick Negro. Why? Because you have the prophets telling you, don't do this, don't do that. It's in, the, it's in the word of God. This is God telling us to tell you, don't do this and don't do that, and you shrug it off. You talk down on us. You call the police on us. You want to have us killed. You want to have, you try to kill some of us. Yes, Brothers have been shot out there at camp. And we out there telling y'all, choose life. Keep the commandments so we can get back to our rightful status. So we can get this lower state that's been placed upon our people that we can get it off of. Today is the best day, family, to start keeping these commandments. If you ain't been doing it, today is the best day to start. Today is the best day to make haste. It's the best day because we ain't, you ain't promised tomorrow and we don't have yesterday. All we got is today, the here and now. So when is the best time to do it? Right now. The best time is today. Man, look, and this is the thing. You ain't, it ain't on me to choose for you. That's the choice you got to make for yourself. I'm sure if, 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 if the men in leadership could say, you know what, hey, yeah, God, let, them, let, let us all of us make it into the kingdom. 
they would say that. They would say that, you know, as long as you righteous. Now, if you're wicked, they're not going to say it. I'm done. I wouldn't say it if your ass was wicked. But if you're righteous, if you're trying to do your best to keep these commandments, hey, yeah, God, let us all make it into the kingdom. But that ain't how he moved. That ain't what he said. That's not how he operate. He said two-thirds ain't going to make it. Because why? Two-thirds is going to choose death because they love the way of the world. And you can't have two masters. You can't have two masters. Get that. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. You can't have two masters. You can't serve two masters. When you serve God, you're going to serve the world. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So you can't serve God and mammon. Today is the day you're going to have to make a choice. Today is the best day for you to choose God. Because guess what? If you choose mammon, you're done. You're done. You done done. What you going to do? What you going to do? Because I'm going to say this. If you choose not to, if you choose not to keep these commandments, if you're like, you know what, I'm good, I'm going to just rock it, then guess what? You better live your best life. Because when the Most High pass, that, pass it down on you, pass that judgment on you, you better hope you survive. And then when you go to bed for that long time and wake up for judgment, you're not going to make it. You're going to get that second death because you chose mammon. You chose the idols over God. And he tell you, don't have no other gods before me. And you chose those idols, which the, the gods of other nations are idols. Ain't no other gods but, but the one. You know what? Let's get that song. Was it Psalm 92? 95. 95. Let's yeah, get that. I got banged up behind this one time. A whole class. They didn't put the whole damn class on that. The book of Psalms to the 96, verse 5. For all the gods of the nation are idols, but but the Lord made the heavens. So hey, read verse 4. Start at verse 4. The book of Psalms to the 96, verse 4. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Verse 5. For all, for all the gods of the nation are idols. So, but, no, that's just it. So right there. So right there. There ain't no other gods. There's only one. The Lord God of Israel. The most high God. And you got to get back to keeping these commandments, y'all. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. You got to get back to keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. And today is the best day to start. You know, I feel for my family members who, who say, you know what, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Because you just, you just signed your death warrant. You just signed your death warrant by not keeping these commandments. So today is the best day. Today is the best day for you to get to it. Or oh, whatever it is you got to work on, whatever it is you need to do, examine yourself, communicate, congregate, exhort, correct, get counsel, whatever it is. Today is the best day to do it because you ain't promised tomorrow and you can't get back yesterday. So. All praise to the Most High God. Look, man, today the best day, y'all. Today is the best day. I pray that y'all got something out this class. I pray that it was it, it, that it uh, exhorted you to do better things, to do better works, exhorted you to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. 
I'm Officer Baruch, and I got with me. Officer Abishai. Hey, man, a mighty man. All praise to the Most High. As I always like to say, stay strong, stay focused, and stay in the spirit. And with that, we say shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And I-